you know, been in fights and, you know, just, just use that as my medicine because it was so hard to find what I needed, which was cannabis. And, you know, in Utah, that's let me, just, let me tell you, let me, let me say, I, I've had some, I've had people say to me, and, and some, some Christian groups have really gotten down on me because I recommend the legalization of cannabis. And, and, yeah, and they, I, I believe it's a sacrament. I believe it's more than just a plan. I think the Bible talks about it as a plan to renown. I think God said, I gave you all the plants here, this, and this one is the most useful in the country. And as soon as I start Clay, 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 yeah. Ryan was getting, Ryan was really building up to it. Go, go ahead, Ryan, go ahead. I mean, I don't well, understand. You, you I'm know, I, I don't mind the commentary at all. I, I You know, I, I actually think a lot of this has been covered before. I feel like I'm just kind of, uh, you know, reiterating what's already been said a thousand times Get before. Get back we, to your we point there, Ryan. Get it's, back to that. Go on. Yeah, it's you know it's, it's obviously and most point. definitely one of those uh, plants that God gave us, and you know, and, and like you're saying, uh, mentioning the first page of the Bible, Genesis one twenty nine. How did it save you? How did it save you? How did it turn well, you into a minister? How did it save oh, you? Oh, absolutely, yeah, sure, I'll get into that. Uh, as far as how it saved me, I mean, the the anger that I had built up, you know, like I was saying, the medicine I was using was the wrong medicine. I was using anger. I was using frustration, and when I couldn't find cannabis, I would use other self-medicating drugs, harder drugs, you know, because it was so hard to find in Utah, and it's it's a no-tolerance state, so people don't dare grow it. They'll end up like Clayton with a life sentence, or, or close to anyway, and lose their families, you know, have asset forfeiture happen on their assets. And so people didn't grow, and people, you know, depended on the Mexican cartels to bring in this, you know, really horrible marijuana. And uh, so I, I had little access to it and ended up with uh, a lot of mental problems, a lot of anger issues mostly, and uh, I, I didn't have the relief I needed. I didn't have medicine that I could trust that wouldn't kill me. So I ended up leaving home and moving to Washington at age 17, and that's when we got you know cannabis legalized. It, it was about uh, 97 when, when that passed through uh, SB, uh, Proposition 615, and I had worked on that, which, which I'm proud of. Um, and, uh, you know, after that, I kind of went on with my own life. I, I found Jesus Christ at a street ministry in Seattle, New Horizons Ministries, uh, witnessed to me, loved me, gave me the love of Christ without judgment, um, knew that I was using cannabis, knew that I probably was having premarital sex, didn't really care about my personal stuff. They cared about my heart and wanting to heal me. And that's when I got acquainted with Jesus Christ. And I gave up cannabis, I gave up uh, alcohol, I gave up cigarettes. I just wanted to know Christ. I, I wanted nothing but Christ. And then uh, just recently I, I started working graveyard shifts. I do uh, database admin stuff at night, uh, building databases and repairing things for hospitals. And um, so I started working these graveyards, and I found out that I have a condition called cluster headaches, uh, which is from a constricted blood vessel in my head. And similar to how coma is treated with cannabis, my cluster headaches and my constriction in my head was also treated the same way. So I started using cannabis as, as a form of relief, not necessarily a sacrament, um, but I started finding relief in cannabis medicinally and, you know, and uh, spiritually, mentally. In so many ways, I started feeling that relief that I had when I was using it as a kid, and I uh, started researching more about my faith and, and talking to pastors about it, getting a lot of feedback, negative feedback for sure, and, you know, I've, I've spoken at Baptist, uh, Southern Baptist conferences about suicide. My brother killed himself at age 16 on prescription medication. So uh, I had a lot to do with the church. Um, I spoke at a lot of conferences, and I helped out at a street ministry, in, or it's more of a coffee shop in uh, Salt Lake City that was also a church and a ministry. And uh, it was my whole life. I mean, Jesus Christ has been everything to me for almost 11 years. But I found more and more about my faith by, by getting this criticism in this, these debates, which I love. You know, um, you know what is it? Psalm 27.5 says, open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. I love people to rebuke me. I love people to say, you're doing something wrong. I challenge you. You know, look into that deeper. And, and I, I, I crave that. You know, I, I always wanted that because I was lost. I was a lost soul, and I needed more. You know, I needed more, more food, more, more food from God, more spiritual food. And so that caused me to look into this deeper, and that's when I found, you know, the emperor wears no clothes and uh, started reading Jack Harris' works and researching cannabis more and getting more, you know, acquainted with the truth that was hidden from me my whole life, especially being Mormon. Um, you know, I had no access to true information about cannabis uh, growing up at all, except for true friends. Say that again. 
Okay, absolutely right. correct. And you're doing you're doing a wonderful job of explaining your story here, and you're really hitting 